Man, okay, so unfortunately, whether we, we like it or not, the 2021-22 season is over. Finito. So let's do our way too early start start predicting what's going to be going on in the future this offseason. So you're going to be the new GM, all right? We're firing John Lynch. We're making Maverick Pollock the new GM of the uh, of the 49ers. What are your most important keys to this offseason, Nav? Well, I, I think you have to make your decision on Lance one, which it seems like they have, and that's moving forward with him at the starter as a starter. So you have to trade Garoppolo, uh, and then the net, to recoup some of that draft capital. But I want to make the offensive line tough again, the, especially the interior line. Um, and I think the first step in that is re-signing Lake and Tomlinson. He's probably the most underrated person on this team, in my opinion just because of the fact that he's always healthy, he's there, he's a leader on this team, and he helps stabilize that left side of the line with Trent Williams. You have to make a decision on Alex Mack. Is he retiring? Is he going to play? And then Daniel Brunskill, do you want him to be that sixth man still? Do, do you want to keep him at right guard? And then what are you doing with Mike McGlinchey? So I'm looking at those three sides on three positions on the right side, and you have to do something there. You also have to figure out your secondary – because there's a free agent at safety, there's a free agent at nickelback, and there's a free agent at cornerback that you have to decide do you want to bring back. I think Verrett's probably gone unless he comes back on a cheap deal. Uh, K1 Williams, I would rather go younger there, someone that can play more man, especially because you kind of need to be able to play a little bit of man defense when you're in a division with Cooper Cup and DeAndre Hopkins running routes in the slot. And then safety, Jaquaski tart I'm not holding that – Last play or that last memory of him uh, dropping the interception, I don't think that has any bearing on whether they would re-sign him or not. I think that decision was probably already made. But if he's cheap enough, I think you do have to bring him back because is Hufunga ready? Is he not? Yeah, it really depends on if the three rookie corner or rookie DBs they drafted last year, if they think they're all ready. Hufunga, Lenore, and Thomas, are they ready to have starting roles next year? Yeah, I mean, I think you've hit it right on the head. Um I think the offensive line and the secondary are the two biggest uh, immediate needs because it seems like there's a lot of strength and depth in other positions, right? So I agree with you. I mean, I'm looking probably, you know, obviously right now, as of now, our our top pick is a second, late second round pick, more than likely. And, um, you know, where can you get the best value either at a guard slash center position or a nickel corner, like you said, because even though K1 has, you know, been a stalwart at that position and one of the best nickels, I personally think that near the tail end of the season, he showed a lot of flaws. He seemed to get burned a lot more. Um, he's always had that injury issue. Um, I really think that you could probably get better value or upgrade at that position just based off of stability and just somebody who could play you know, week in, week out, and maybe not get burned for so many big plays like K1 did near the tail end, especially in the playoffs there as well. Um, Yeah, but I think O-line is probably where I would target because I think you've seen second-round draft picks when it comes to that guard center. Like, left tackles, they're all going to be off of the off of, off of the um, field. But you see some of these, like, Creed Humphreys, like, um, was mentioned by Swang Song or – you know, even a Quentin Miners, like you were talking about. These are second-round picks that are Pro Bowl caliber players, and there's not too many other positions where you could find Pro Bowl talent um, that you could just plug and play for the next 10 years uh, in the second round like you can interior line. So I really think that that should be where they're really eyeing because they could find probably a very talented player late in the second round that fits a need. Um, whereas maybe corner, you might not getting, be getting the best corner late in the second round, but you might be able to get the best center slash guard late in the second round. So I would say maybe that that's where you need to take. And that's why I think Lake and Tomlinson is so important because I would love if they drafted offensive linemen. A lot of the offensive linemen last year were some of my biggest draft crushes, but right now I don't, I don't feel a hundred percent confident in this team's, this regime's ability to draft offensive linemen, just the way every O lineman they've drafted has panned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron Banks 
we'll see how if he makes the leap in the second year. Colt McKivitz looked good against the Rams, but I wouldn't be comfortable with him starting. Jalen Moore had his ups and downs. So I, I, they can find one offensive lineman in the draft. I, I, I hope, I hope they do that early on, but they need at least one veteran back, and and that's where Tomlinson. I think uh, Tomlinson needs to be back and step up because if they if they hit on one of those draft picks, yes, he's their right guard or right tackle or center or whatever. But but they need that other, maybe not all pro level. Lakin Tomlinson's not an all pro by, by any means, but he he is a plus starter and they have to bring him back. Yeah. I mean, you hope he just doesn't price himself out. Right. Because yeah. I think he thinks he deserves really big money and they already made, you know, uh, they already made, they already pay him the left tackle, the most money of any offensive lineman. I don't know if they could, you know, give him the type of money that he's looking for. So we'll see, but I do agree with you. I mean, you are right. 49ers haven't had a great track record of drafting, offensive linemen maybe it's a position where they might try to find another steal like they did with um you know with uh Trent Williams and uh maybe they could use some draft capital late round third round or whatever draft capital and and steal a, a guard or somebody from somebody who might be like looking to sell because there are a lot of good teams that ha- are in cap kind of hell I guess you could say so maybe they could kind of pounce on and finesse somebody out of that but i like your list i like where your head's at you kind of mentioned a little bit of this so what i'd like to do i have a list of free agents uh with the 49ers and i kind of want to go mainly off the unrestricted but maybe we could just go down the list map and you tell me if you would sign them and or if you would let them walk and then um maybe just a little bit about why all right um, so the first one you kind of mentioned already, so we kind of know your answer, but we'll, we'll go through it again. Uh, Lake and Tomlinson, do you sign him or do you let him walk? Uh, I'm resigning him at all costs. I don't know what the, the franchise would be for an offensive guard, but I, I, I would, I think the way they handled the Trent Williams situation last year, if they are not going to let Trent Williams leave the building, they were going to give him whatever he wanted. I think they have to do something similar with Lake and Tomlinson just because, the, I, I was looking at the guards. There's obviously Brandon Scherf is good, but he also has injury problems. Your whole offensive line has injury problems, except for Lake and Tomlinson. I think you have to get that guy that you know is going to do the right thing, be always always be on the field and be a leader. So he's my number one priority. I like that. Okay, cool. Um, I agree with you. I think Lake and Tomlinson and Trent Williams have a chemistry there. Um, I think if you could re-sign them, I mean, Trent probably has another good two, three years in him. If Lakin could, I think he's not, maybe doesn't have the same upside as Trent, but maybe together they could still solidify that left side of the offensive line for the next two, three years, which would give you know us at least enough time to see Trey kind of go get into his you know go into his own. So I agree with you with that. Here's a tough one, man. Jason Verrett. Uh, if if he's willing to come back for less than two million dollars, I would definitely have him back. That that's no problem. That's essentially a vet minimum anything under two is nothing too hard on the cap uh i think he would have to earn his starting spot i think they have to they can't do what they did this season which is what i think you were touching on earlier they can't bank on his health he Mm -hmm. has to come in as the third or the fourth corner and if he ends up being thrown into the lineup that's great essentially what happened in 2020 if he becomes the starter and he's healthy, that's great. But you cannot be like, hey, Jason Barrett's one side, Emmanuel Mosley's the other, Ambry Thomas is the backup. Because that will end up backfiring and you will end up having no one to back up Ambry Thomas and we'll end up with Dante Johnson again as the top outside corner opposite Mosley. Right. Now, I agree with you. I think Jason Barrett's upside is just too much to let go of. But I'll play devil's advocate here. Do you waste another, quote unquote, waste another roster spot on a guy like Verrett, who uh, instead of bringing in somebody maybe younger that you can develop and keep long term with the team, versus keep a Verrett who might just be rehabbing, you know, the whole the whole time on your roster. Well, I think if if he gets injured, you just put him on IR right away, free up that roster spot, and then just cut bait basically with with with. D Ford was where if he's not going to play, we're just going to put him on IR and wash our hands clean of this. 
Same with Weston Richburg. If he's not going to come back, let's just end his season now, get that roster spot. I think that's what you would have to do with Verrett if you if you bring him back. Is If there's any sign of injury, either cut bait or put him on IR. Uh, no, no waiting around with him. So oh, what about if there's another option of maybe not as upside talent, but somebody that can stay healthier longer? Do you just let Verrett walk and go after that type of player is what I'm saying? Because so like a Dante you, Johnson type, are you saying? Yeah, Dante Johnson, but maybe even, I mean, I like Dante Johnson, but let's just say, because I know people are up and down on him, let's just say even somebody a little bit better than Dante Johnson. Um, but, you know, do you take the roster spot with him or do you let Jason Barrett walk? As long as Barrett's cheap, I'm fine with taking a flyer for under $2 million on a backup cornerback. I think that the upside is there. And worst case, he's hurt in, in your back where you started. And those mid-level corners, as we saw with Josh Norman, aren't anything to write home about. But they're serviceable as long as you have a good pass rush. And that's why you got to invest in the pass rush and hope your $1.5 million Verrett and Emmanuel Mosley and Ambry Thomas investments work out. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it. Um, going to the defensive line, DJ Jones. So this is somebody who played, obviously, inside alongside with Armstead. A little bit up and down. Wanted him to be more of a run stopper than he actually ended up turning out to be. Um, but is he worth bringing back? Um, and we can't just say – we can't just make everybody's contract feasible for the 49ers. So, like, uh, realistically, is DJ Jones somebody you'd bring back or would you let him walk? I'd love to bring DJ Jones back, but I think he'll end up being too expensive. I tend to lean toward – when you're building defensive line and re-signing guys, I tend to lean toward – the edge and making sure your edge rushers are taken care of. I think the Niners have a lot of depth on the inside, especially with Kinlaw back. I know we can't assume John Kinlaw will ever play a game, seems mm -hmm. like, but if he is there, Kinlaw, Armstead, Kevin Givens, if they bring Mo Hurst back, who should be inexpensive on the inside, uh, I think it'd be better to bring back Arden Key at $4 million than it would be DJ Jones at $10 million, $9 million, whatever he's going to make. He might mm -hmm. make a lot. I, I think – Something similar around three years, 21 million is what it might end up being for DJ Jones if we're going low on it. So that might be too expensive. So I'd rather go the Arden Key route and have that versatility. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we have the best defensive line coach in the league, and he does wonders with people that other teams have given up on. So I think they could really find value. I don't think they should really overpay anybody on the defensive line unless they're like a superstar, like a Bosa. Like, I think even Armstead has earned his contract as well. But unless you're giving that kind of production, I don't think that you deserve, you know, a lot of money right now with the defensive line because we've seen him do uh, so much with the Amenahu, who was, you know, an afterthought at Jacksonville, right? So um, let's go to this. This is an interesting one. I'm, I'm interested to see what you say. Raheem Mostert. I'm curious on if McDaniel gets the head coaching job at Miami because I think that's perfect for Raheem Mostert to go there. They have a struggling uh, backfield. Raheem Mostert's from Florida. He'd be perfect to go to the Dolphins and go over there. I think he's going to be a little inexpensive just due to his injury history. I definitely think they need to get a veteran behind Elijah Mitchell. I don't know if Mostert's the right guy for that. I think they need to get someone that has a little more pass catching experience because it seems like Mitchell they weren't comfortable with on third down. The fact that Jamichael Hasty was out there a lot of the time on third down, so I'd, I'd rather them go that route. Uh, if I'm picking between Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr., I think I'm going it, at the same price. Let's say I think I'm going Mostert over Wilson, just the the speed and the upside. But I think there will be more of a market for Mostert, so he might be too pricey. I'm not going over two million dollars though with him. Yeah, it would be kind of phenomenal, though, if you look at Trey Lance, Mitchell Mostert's Debo in that backfield. That's kind of wild. You know what I mean? And I do I do like Mostert in that counterpunch role versus the workhorse role. I think in 2019, when he was behind Coleman and Brita, was like when you really got to see how much he could shine. So it would be nice, but I think you're right. It's all going to come down to money. I'm interested to see if there is a big market for him because of the type of injury he came off of. And, you know, he, he is somebody who's a little bit injury prone. Um, so to be seen, but 
I do think that once again, just like the defensive line, the running back core is somewhere where 49ers should never overpay because they could find anybody in the sixth round that could come in and become, you know, uh, break all kinds of rookie records for the 49ers. So as long as you got Bobby Turner there, I don't think you overpay at that position. You could find somebody to, to, to be elite in that type of system. So we talked about Jeff Wilson. We talked about Arden Key. You said sign Arden Key, right? Let's talk about K1. K1 Williams. See somebody you resign or see somebody you let walk? I, I'm moving on from K1. Uh, I just think they need, uh, as I was touching on earlier, I think they need to go man cover nickel corner or one that has man coverage abilities. Uh, whether that's some, if they trust Diamond or Lenore taking that on, I don't necessarily want to go that route. But drafting someone and then pairing him with a veteran that has nickel experience like Kevin King or Buster Screen, one of those type of guys, I'd rather go that route. I think K1 Williams will probably end up with the Jets, and that will be great for him. Uh, I think the Niners have to go younger at nickel. Got you. Keeping it with the secondary, Jaquaski Tart. Yeah, I'd, I I think you got to go Tart. I think you got to try to re-sign him. If he's a similar price, definitely. He was very inexpensive. I didn't think he'd go for that little money this past offseason. I'm not holding the interception against him. Uh, I don't think Hufunga is ready to be the, the free safety or strong safety, depending on where Ward is. I like Hufunga in that third safety role. I think he'll excel in that spot, especially with the injury history with the other two safeties, if Tart does come back, I'd like to bring him back. But anything over three million, I think you gotta look in a different direction. And safety would be where you would save money. Yeah, I mean, that's where maybe I might disagree with you a little bit. I mean, Tart, I think his biggest issue had been health, and this season he was able to play. You know, majority of the games. I think he might have missed like one or two, maybe max. But his, him and Ward just do so much to mask a lot of the weaknesses that may be there on the defensive side. And I really don't think you, there's another safety out there like Tart that could just plug and play in and do what they the guy like D'Amico Ryans does with those type of safeties, right? And I think especially with D'Amico there, bringing Tart back to me would be very important because I think those two safeties just do so much. And, you know, people might remember that, you know, the interception that's dropped. But he also, the week before, did a game-saving tackle when um, Aaron Jones, you know, Jimmy Ward, you know, missed his assignment for whatever reason, and, and Tart just booked it across the whole field and saved what probably would have put the game out. You mean you were saying a field goal would have put the game out of reach, let alone a touchdown. Tart, Tart saved that, and um, I just think that he's just so versatile and uh, – even if he's more than $3 million, Mav, I might pay it just because I think that it makes the defense overall so much better. And I think that having a defense that you could count on is kind of what you need for the 49ers, especially if they're going to have a rookie or, you know, a young quarterback starting that, you know, they're going to be maybe some ups and downs. Having that consistency at defense, I think, is going to be key. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not against that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me see if there's anybody else. Um, let's talk about a guy like – so this is kind of a fringe guy, Jordan Willis. So Willis obviously had, um, you know, the suspension for the first half of the season. Second half of the season he came in, and he made some very, very impactful plays. I mean, obviously the game you were talking about in uh, the green against Green Bay – Jordan Willis might be the, the the game MVP of that game with all of the plays he made on special teams. But uh, is that somebody that you bring back just because of his versatility and, you know, full season of him? What Would you want to see what that looks like? Or is that somebody that is kind of just somebody you let walk? I, I think Jordan Willis is definitely someone I would bring back. I like how, he's in, how much he's improved under Chris Kosarik. And I think that's someone that if they gave uh, a nice little investment – it, they've already put investment in him, just trading a draft pick for him and getting him mm -hmm. over here and then re-signing him. I think that's someone they, they need to see out, see his development out. I, I like the idea of having the three backup defensive ends being Arden Key, um, Jordan Willis, and Omenahu, and, and that's something I want to see next year. 
I like that. I agree with you, man. I, I really like Willis. I think his interview um, after that Green Bay game made him a fan favorite with the 49ers. He just seems like he's a team first guy, really humble. And you can't find that type of athleticism. And I think especially, you know, with Amenahu coming back, he's under contract for next season. Um, Ebacom is under contract for next season. You also, you know, you got Nick Bosa as a stalwart there on the edge to have a Willis, Ebacom, Amenahu type of rotation on the outside as well. And some of those guys can move inside. I think would really, really do wonders, right? And it kind of buys you time um, without having to draft another edge kind of rusher, especially with, you know, draft capital not as high right now with our first round picks kind of gone. So I, I think he'd be a steal if they could bring him back. And he seems like he loves the team. They obviously, you know, invested in him and kept him around, even though they could have cut him after that suspension. And I think, you know, he's somebody who could get come back on a team friendly deal just because of how the team treated him. So I think that'd be great. So there's some uh, restricted free agents, some good names. Um, let's say I'm going to list one, two, three, four, five, six restricted free agents. Um, let's say you could only keep three. All right. So Demetrius Flanagan Foles, Jamichael Hasty, Jawan Jennings, Richie James. Aziz Alshair and Kevin Givens are the six. You can only keep three. What are the three that you're you're keeping? I'm intrigued by what they could get when they tender Aziz Alshair in terms of draft pick compensation. Uh huh. If if they gave him a first or second round tender, I, I'd be interested in a, a second round swap or a third round swap. But I'm definitely bringing back Juwan Jennings. I loved his blocking ability and just him coming across the middle and what he can do. Plus the fact that uh, slot corners tend to be smaller guys and he just has so much size on them. So I'm definitely bringing back Jennings. I'm bringing back Aziz Alshair unless you get an awesome return in terms of uh, draft pick compensation on the tender. And then uh, the last one, I I'd let Flanagan Foles walk if I have to. Um, and then Hasty, I'm letting walk. And then you said Givens was the last one? Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll bring back Givens, especially because I'm letting DJ Jones walk in this scenario. Uh, I think you need to bring back some defensive linemen. And, and I like what I've seen from Givens on the field. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a big piece. I think having him, I, I'm also a big Darian Daniels guy. So, so all those, interior, those young interior defensive linemen that they can bring back if they lose Jones, that, that's key. I like your list, man. Swan Sog agrees. Those are the three I'd keep too. Jennings, Given, Aziz, Al Shire. I mean, Hasty is great, but once again, you know, I'm I think the 49ers could plug in any running back. Um, I think they could find another running back um in the draft or you know, a free agency that they could bring in. Um, but those three were dynamic pro uh performance players for the 49ers. They played a role. They were in the rotation. I think Jennings is kind of solidified himself as that number three receiver for the 49ers that, you know, they lost in Bourne. I think Jennings has come in and shown us that he could be that third down option and, you know, turn into maybe a, um, a red zone option. I think even with Trey there, he's going to even shine even more. I think Aziz has shown that he's legit. And who knows? I mean, I think – um, if I'm not mistaken, Dre Greenlaw's contract might be coming up or might be, you know, there for a, uh, an extension. I'm not sure if they want to extend him. Maybe if they have Aziz there, that gives them some, um, leverage, I guess, or at least a backup plan in case they can't get a deal locked in with, uh, Dre. And, uh, like you said, I mean, Kevin Givens, I think played really well, um, you know, that defensive line has been the strength. So if you if they could uh, keep them, then they could keep them. Yeah, so Swan says, Dre Greenlaw signed for 2022, but he might be looking for an extension. So Aziz definitely gives them that uh, that leverage just in case, you know, Dre walks in 2023. So I love it, man. 